Welcome to our channel, where we explore the lives of influential figures who shaped our world. Today, we're diving into the remarkable story of Margaret Sanger, an iconic advocate for women's reproductive rights and a controversial figure in the history of social reform. Margaret Sanger, born on September 14, 1879, in Corning, New York, is often regarded as a pioneer in the fight for women's reproductive rights. Her life was characterized by a deep commitment to advocating for women's autonomy over their bodies and their reproductive choices. Sanger's journey was profoundly shaped by her experiences growing up in a large Irish Catholic family, witnessing the struggles of her mother and other women in her community. Her early exposure to the hardships of childbirth and maternal health ignited her passion for social reform and set the stage for her later activism. Throughout her life, Sanger navigated personal challenges and societal opposition, ultimately becoming a central figure in the birth control movement and sparking significant changes in public policy and attitudes towards family planning. However, her legacy remains complex and controversial, particularly due to her associations with the eugenics movement, prompting ongoing discussions about the ethical implications of her work. Early Life and Education Margaret Sanger was the sixth of eleven children born to an Irish Catholic family. Her mother, Anne, suffered from tuberculosis, which resulted in multiple pregnancies that took a toll on her health. The family faced significant hardships, including the loss of several siblings at a young age, which profoundly impacted Sanger's understanding of women's suffering. Witnessing her mother's struggles with childbirth instilled in her a sense of urgency to address the issues surrounding women's health and reproductive rights. After completing her education at a local high school, Sanger pursued nursing, graduating from the White Plains Hospital School of Nursing in 1899. Her nursing career brought her into contact with women suffering from the consequences of unwanted pregnancies and unsafe abortions. These experiences fueled her desire to advocate for reproductive health and sparked her activism. Activism begins. In 1911, while working as a visiting nurse in New York City's impoverished neighborhoods, Sanger began to write a column titled, What Every Girl Should Know, for a local newspaper. In her writing, she addressed topics such as sexual health and contraception, challenging the existing taboos surrounding these issues. Her candid approach gained traction and laid the groundwork for her future activism. The Birth Control Movement In 1916, Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in the United States in Brooklyn. This clinic aimed to provide women with access to contraceptives and information about reproductive health. However, her actions led to her arrest for violating the Comstock Act, which prohibited the distribution of contraceptive information. The legal battle that ensued garnered significant media attention and highlighted the urgent need for reform in reproductive health laws. Following her arrest, Sanger became more determined to advocate for women's rights. She traveled to Europe to learn about contraceptive methods being used there and to connect with other advocates for reproductive rights. These experiences reinforced her commitment to the cause. Establishing Organizations in 1921, Sanger founded the American Birth Control League, which aimed to promote access to contraception and education for women. This organization later evolved into the Planned Parenthood Federation of America in 1942. Sanger's efforts contributed to a shift in public opinion about birth control, moving it from a fringe issue to a mainstream concern. Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, Sanger continued to work tirelessly to promote family planning. She traveled extensively, giving speeches and lectures on birth control and women's health. In 1936, a landmark legal decision allowed physicians to distribute contraceptive devices, marking a significant victory for Sanger and the birth control movement. Controversies and Eugenics While Sanger's contributions to reproductive rights are widely recognized, her legacy is complicated by her support for eugenics, a movement that aimed to improve the genetic quality of the human population. Sanger believed that controlling population growth through selective breeding could lead to a healthier society. Her association with eugenicists and her statements on the matter have drawn significant criticism in modern discussions about her legacy and ethical implications. Critics argue that her views on eugenics contributed to the marginalization of certain populations, including people of color and those with disabilities. 
Nonetheless, it is important to consider the context of her time, as eugenics was a widely accepted ideology among many social reformers in the early 20th century. Later years and continued advocacy. In the latter part of her life, Sanger continued to advocate for women's reproductive rights and was involved in various international initiatives. She played a key role in establishing the International Planned Parenthood Federation in 1952, promoting reproductive health on a global scale. Sanger authored several influential works, including My Fight for Birth Control 1931 and Woman and the New Race 1920 where she articulated her beliefs and strategies for advancing women's rights. Death and Legacy Margaret Sanger passed away on September 6, 1966, in Tucson, Arizona, at the age of 86. Her legacy is multifaceted, she is celebrated as a pioneer in the birth control movement and a champion for women's reproductive rights, yet she is also scrutinized for her controversial views on eugenics. Today, her contributions continue to influence discussions on women's health and reproductive autonomy, reminding us of the ongoing struggle for these fundamental rights. Sanger's life story serves as both inspiration and caution, reflecting the complexities of social change and the importance of addressing ethical considerations in advocacy.